May 18th, 1920, in Waterweiss, Poland, at the height of the Nazi Empire's power, Karol Joseph Washita is born. But you'll not see Karol's name anywhere in history books, though he is one of the most famous members in history, yet so unsung by his original name. His real name that we all know him by is Pope John Paul II. Pope John Paul II was one of the most modernizing and one of the considered one of the greatest popes of all time. And he completely revitalized the church, bringing it into a very small golden age of the papacy himself. Carol worked around through a certain small university. He stayed there for a year and loved the theology, philosophy, and the teachings of Jesus specifically in his program. He was so enthralled by it that when the Nazis shut it down, he went to underground Catholic sessions to learn more about the teachings of Jesus and the Bible. Even though he knew that he could be sent by, to a concentration camp himself, just for doing this, he was still so passionate about it that he did not care. Later, he became more focused on going into the priesthood. And when he finally could be a priest, he, in 1946, he was ordained. Even though this was another death sentence for him, he still accepted it. Carroll worked through Jewish communities, and he worked through also suppressed Catholics. And he helped them survive the Holocaust and move them through different areas, keeping them out of ghettos and concentration camps and making sure that they had social justice. After the Nazis fell, Carol rose himself up through the ranks through bishop, archbishop, to finally becoming cardinal. And when the predecessor pope had died, he was finally in the running for becoming pope himself. And on October 16, 1978, he humbly accepted becoming Pope. And right off the bat, when he first got in, he completely revitalized the church. He apologized, surprisingly, to all non-Catholic religions for the church's mistreatment of them at some point in history. He apologized to Jews, Muslims, Protestants, and all other types of religions for any time in history that they mistreated them. He visited the most foreign countries out of any other pope, making sure to see the poorest part of that nation. He specifically went to third world nations, coming face to face with the starving, those in anguish, and those who cannot get social justice, and felt their pain right there. He blessed them, and he loved them. And they loved him back. He actually re-established relationships with the UK, USA, Israel, and Palestine, all in a short span of time. And he was able to spread the church's roots out to a more deeper level than just being aliens in a foreign country. They were there and they were accepted, and the people loved them even more. He created 232 new cardinals, making sure that he established order in the church and to follow certain modern rules that he set in, establishing that you stay conservative yet open at the same time. And he still followed the teachings of Jesus to accept others the way you want to be accepted. Though, with all of his teachings and all the people that loved them, there was still some distaste for him. On May 13, 1981, Turkish gunman Mehmet Ali Akka shot Pope John Paul II while he was driving around Rome, waving to the people who loved him. The police arrested Ali and sent him to an Italian prison. But right after, the Pope had healed. The Pope didn't spite him and didn't persecute him. Instead, he walked up to Ali in the inter in the interrogation room, sat down, and he forgave him, like Jesus forgave Judas. And Mehmet felt this certain realization 
Life's too short to be angry all the time. And he came back, and you basically cried in the interview room. And he kissed the Pope's ring, and he was forgiven. Though, right after, the Pope continued his teaching, but it wasn't before long that his old age kept, you know, caught up with him. And after a while, he developed Parkinson's, and his state just started to deteriorate. He developed heart problems, and he also developed uh, shaking problems where he couldn't finish speeches after a while. He was hospitalized two times, and when he knew he was at his deathbed, he received a letter that he didn't expect from anyone else, the man who shot him. Ali sent him a message saying that he believes that God will save the Pope, and that he's so sorry for what he's done, and that he loves him and that he truly feels at peace now. And the Pope was happy about this. So, on April 2nd, 2005, the Pope succumbs to his illness. And he died, not within a ball of fire, and not through a certain revelation. He died quietly, and most of all, he died a happy man. And he loved his people, and they loved them. And he truly made the way the church is today. A specific order dedicated to helping those who feel mistreated, who can't have social justice, who are in anguish. And he made sure that everyone was treated the right way.